the Irene Dunn, Fred McMurray Show. Starring Irene Dunn as Susan and Fred McMurray as George. Together in a gay, new, exciting comedy adventure, Bright Star. It's the Irene Dunn, Fred McMurray Show. Starring Irene Dunn as Susan Armstrong, owner and editor of the Hillsdale Morning Star, and Fred McMurray as George Harvey, the paper's star reporter. And if at the moment things seem pretty quiet with Irene and Fred, that is, Susan and George, five will get you ten that the condition is only temporary. Have you done anything about this letter from... Uh, am I disturbing you, Miss Armstrong? What? Oh, no, George. Go right ahead. I'm listening. Good. Well, you know this letter that came in last week from C.L. Kaufman. Well, he's getting in from New York this afternoon, and... Susan, this is good old George talking to you. Remember me? I have the strangest feeling, George. Like a message is trying to break through to me from out of the air. Well, would you mind snapping out of it, Susan? If there's anyone who's trying to break through the fog, it's... Hey, somebody threw a rock through the window. I, I might have been hurt. Too bad about you. Look, there's a flower tied to the rock. Watch out, Susan. It might be a bomb. Oh, don't be silly, George. It's just a rose, a single rose with a card. Uh, what's it say? It's for me, George. Susan, unless you read it to me, I'll... I'll... You'll what? Well, I'll look over your shoulder. There's just a signature. Amaryllis. That's all he ever says. Amarillo. All he ever? You mean this isn't the first time? Oh, no. It's been going on all week. Well, I thought the office had been a little drafty. He doesn't always use the window. Sometimes he leaves his tributes outside the door. Tributes? A single rose, a single gentian. Isn't it exciting, George? Susan. Miss Armstrong. Oh, dear. Susan, would you mind descending from cloud nine? You've still got a newspaper to run, you know. He must be tall and blonde, hair tumbling over his forehead in shining ringlets. How about C.L. Kaufman? Who's C.L. Kaufman? Well, he probably doesn't have shining ringlets tumbling over his forehead, but he's coming here from New York to see if his agency wants to place their advertising in our paper or the news. Remember? Vaguely. Vaguely. Susan, he's going to expect someone to meet him this evening. Take him out and show him a big time. Oh, that's nice, George. You do it. Me? Spend the whole evening with some bald-headed rounder while you moon over Amaryllis? You can Never. have an unlimited expense account, George. Susan, you're the editor of the paper, and you should... And you're get... the reporter, right? Well... And as editor, I'm assigning you to spend this evening and as much time thereafter as necessary entertaining C.L. Coffey. Susan, you're being totally unfair. And furthermore, I'm not... A single rose... The way to any woman's secret heart. Oh, how corny can you get? <sighs> quitting time, Mr. Harvey. For me, Sammy, there is no quitting time. My duties just go on and on while Miss Armstrong goes home to dream of one who sends a single rose. Amarellis. You've seen him? No, but I find his single rose and single violets outside the door in the morning. Hasn't he ever heard of the United States mail? But you know, Mr. Harvey, this gag is just bad enough to be dynamite with the women. Oh, I don't know. I tried it on my girl the other night. A single chrysanthemum. Oh? Uh, how'd it go? Murder. Murder, huh? And while this is going on, I'm supposed to spend an evening with C.L. Kaufman. Who's C.L. Kaufman? A big space buyer here from New York. He wants to be entertained. Take him to the flower show. You are young, Samuel. See, Al Kaufman will first impress on me how happily married he is. And then want to know if I've got any good phone numbers. He's in for a big disappointment. Eh, there's only some way I could get away from him early. Break a leg? Sammy. Sammy, I am about to give birth to a brilliant idea. We'll eat clean cloths and lots of hot water. You, Sammy, will accompany me this evening as my fun-loving nephew. Huh? You will go along on our revels, Sammy, being your usual charming self. 
This should send Mr. Coffin to bed at an early hour. You're not afraid the paper might lose the account? Well, if it does, it'll serve Miss Armstrong right. Maybe I'm not as obnoxious as you think. Stick close to us, Sammy. I'm willing to take the chance. Just stick close to us. Amaryllis? Ah. <laughs> Yes? Well, uh, how do you do? I'm George Harvey, the Hillsdale Morning Star. I, I guess you're Mr. Kaufman's secretary. Won't you come in? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, this is my little nephew, Sammy. Uh, say hello to Mr. Kaufman's secretary, Sammy. <whistles> down, Sammy, down. <laughs> you have to excuse my nephew. He's a nice kid, but a little precocious. <laughs> you're the editor of the Star, Mr. Harvey? Well, not exactly. Uh, Miss Armstrong is our editor, and she was a little tied up this evening, so Sammy and I are pinch hitting for her. Uh, is uh, Mr. Kaufman around? Who cares about Mr. Kaufman, Uncle George, when we can talk to his secretary? Well, I feel pretty much the same way myself, but uh, business is business, right? Mr. Harvey, do you always take your nephew along on business calls? Oh, I'm sure Mr. Kaufman will grow to love Sammy as much as I do. <laughs> we might kill him before the night's over. <laughs> With kindness, that is. <laughs> do you have dinner in mind? Oh, sure, dinner, the works. I'm on an expense account. Well, it sounds wonderful. I'll get my coat and be right with you. No, you will? Uh, well, how about C.L. Kaufman? Oh, I don't think he'll mind. You see, I'm C.L. Kaufman. You? Mr. Harvey, Uncle George, we hit the jackpot. You don't object that I'm a woman, Mr. Harvey? Object? No, 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 indeed. In fact, I think you make a much better woman than a man. Uh, that is, uh, I mean... Uh, the C stands for Chris. Christine. Christine? Well, it's practically my favorite name. You know, I wasn't much looking forward to this evening when I came here, but uh, now I... You and me both, Uncle George. Uh, Sammy. Uh, Sammy, you sure you haven't got homework or something to do this evening? Don't worry, Uncle George. Just like you said, I'll stick close to you. Well, Sammy, you... Blood's thicker than water, Uncle George. Oh, swell, but... I Sam... wouldn't go off and desert my old uncle. But it... Not for all the money in the world. Five dollars? No, sir. Not for all the money. Make it ten. My only nephew, a blackmailer. Yep. And here's your ten, relative. Thanks. Have a good time, Miss Kaufman. Have a good time, Uncle George. Are we ready, George? Ready, C.L.? Now, let's see. I can put that ten dollars on the expense account. Contribution to juvenile delinquency. Good morning, Susan. What's up? The first thing, George, is that you were over one hour late for work this morning. I was? You uh... were. And the next thing is this expense account you turned in. It's disgraceful. I, I thought it was rather good. Would you mind explaining this item of $12 for orchids? Well, you told me to show old C.L. Kaufman a good time, Susan. Does a good time have to include $10 for a teddy bear? <laughs> you know how it is with us tired businessmen. When we relax, we relax all the way. No, I'll bet. But what do you hear from uh, Amaryllis these days? Uh, George, we're discussing you and C.L. Kaufman and your teddy bear. Oh. I hope that out of all this, you at least convince mm. Mr. Kaufman that he should place his advertising with the star. Advertising? Oh, advertising. I knew there was something we forgot to talk about. George Hart. Yeah, but don't you worry, Susan. I'm perfectly willing to take C.L. out again tonight. Oh, that's certainly big of Oh, it's nothing. No sacrifice is too great to make for the paper. Honestly, for two cents, I'd take Mr. Kaufman off myself tonight. Well, I don't think C.L. would care for your type, Susan. You'd better stick to uh, Amaryllis. Mm -hmm. The trouble with you is, George Harvey, you can't understand anything fine and noble. You're just a, a, a man. Mm, how true, how true. <laughs> well, anyone for lunch? You're going out tonight, Miss Susan? Uh, no, Patience. I'm just going to sit home and burn. Well, it's a nice cool night for it. George? George. Just because I profess some slight interest in this fellow who's been sending me flowers, George thinks he can turn his life into a Bacchanalian revel. A Bacchanalian what? He and that C.L. Kaufman, out buying orchids and teddy bears for strange women, and on my money. How do you know he's out with Mr. Kaufman at all? Patience. You don't suppose... Oh, he wouldn't dare. <laughs> Whatever else you say about Mr. Harvey, you have to admit he's got courage. 
You don't think I should spy on him? No, not a bit. But if it was my money, I'd be under the table in a false mustache. Fine, George. You really rumba beautifully. I do? Well, uh, thank you. It was so inconsiderate of the orchestra to play a waltz. Well, we'll get together one of these times. <laughs> uh, shall we sit down? Thank you. Uh, Miss Kaufman. Chris. Uh, Chris. Uh, yes, George? Do you think we might uh, talk a little business? George. Do you mean you have ulterior motives? Why, no, no, not at all. It's just I that should I... have known. Well, now, wait, Miss Kaufman. Uh, uh, Chris, It wasn't I... as if Mother didn't warn me. Don't leave your home in New York for that city of Hillsdale, she said. You have no idea what men are really like. Oh, but I... You meet a man there, she said. Some handsome, charming, devil-may-care rogue, she told me. Mother said that? About me? Well... <laughs> he'll wait until he has you completely under his spell, and then he'll spring it on you. He'll say... How much advertising space are you going to buy in my paper? George, how could you? I, uh, I guess I'm just a cad. Well, now that uh, you see me in my true colors, I guess there's nothing to do but to say that... Aren't you going to ask me how much space I'm going to buy in your paper? But you said... You forget I'm completely under your spell, George. Well... Well, I, uh, I just happen to have with me a contract, Miss Kaufman, calling for your agency to... George Harvey! Uh, Susan, uh, what are you doing here? I do not intend to make a scene, George. About what? About what? Really, George, you totally betray my trust in you. You use the paper's expense account to lavishly entertain personal friends, and then you brazenly ask... <laughs> Susan, a... Susan, you'll die laughing when you hear it. <laughs> it's really very funny. <laughs> just tell me one thing, George. Where is C.L. Kaufman? Here I am. You're... You're C.L. Kaufman? I told you you'd die laughing, Susan. <laughs> Isn't it the funniest thing you ever heard? <laughs> uh, well, practically side-splitting. <laughs> this is Miss Armstrong, Miss Kaufman. She's the owner of the paper. <laughs> uh, how do you do? How do you do? And Susan, uh, Chris and I, uh, that is Miss Kaufman and I, were just about to sign a contract for... Uh, but you have to explain it to me much more fully, George. Much? How much? Well, it may take days and nights. But, uh, uh, George, listen to what the orchestra's playing. A rumba. Shall we dance? Uh, you don't mind, Susan. Mind? Oh, not a bit. Go right ahead. Well... Come on, George. Shall we dance? I think I brought this on myself. But does George have to enjoy it so much? <laughs> This is Sherry Lewis. You know, they say seeing is believing, but you can't always believe everything you see, for you may not be seeing all there is to see. The ability to read distant signs and charts only indicates that one has the ability to read distant signs and charts. Good sight depends on many other visual skills as well. Vision defects can be a particular problem with children because changes in vision occur so gradually that they may not be aware of them. In fact, studies indicate four out of ten school children are handicapped by visual defects. I recently took my preschool daughter for her first annual vision exam. She loved it. Obviously, a vision exam doesn't hurt. And she had such fun exploring the optometrist's office. And I had fun hearing that her eyes were up to par, especially since 80% of learning is seeing. Why don't you give your youngsters the opportunity to learn as much as possible? Have their eyes and yours professionally examined at least once a year. The American Optometric Association recommends it. Back to our two stars, Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray, and the second act of our story. Susan Armstrong has given her ace reporter, George Harvey, the assignment of entertaining a space buyer for an advertising agency from New York. 
when the space buyer turns out to be young, attractive, and decidedly feminine, George begins to enjoy his assignment immensely. Another flower kicking for you, thank you, Mr. Armstrong. My man, Lillis, a rhododendron. There's an extra dough in there, Sammy. I'll look at it later. I'm just not in the mood for rhododendrons right now. I was talking over your case with my girl last night, Miss Armstrong. Oh, thank you very much, Sammy. It's nothing. My girl says that if Mr. Harvey is having a big quarrel with this Miss Kaufman from New York, so should you. Would you mind saying that again, Sammy? Invent a rival agency man from New York. Let him sweep you off your feet. In a purely imaginary way, of course. No, Sammy, I wouldn't consider it. My relation with Mr. Harvey is based on mutual honesty and trust. Sure. I really couldn't think of such a thing. A, a, a rival space buyer, did you say? They do it in the movies all the time, Miss Armstrong. Oh, no, Sammy, no. Definitely and positively, I do not feel that there is any... Oh. Good morning, Susan. Hi, Sammy. Hi, Mr. Harvey. You look terrible. Uh, the pace that kills. But anything for the newspaper, Susan. I want you to know I appreciate your efforts, George. I know what a great sacrifice you're making. No, like I said, it's nothing. Nothing at all. Well, is uh, time for lunch yet? Mm. How much longer do you think this mad social fling will continue to... Well, it's uh, hard to tell. You see, Ella, is a pretty hard nut to crack. <laughs> but you'll stick on the job if it takes years, won't you, Mr. Harvey? Yeah, you know me, Sammy. Anything? For the newspaper. You told us. Miss Armstrong. No, Sammy, no, definitely not. Hey, okay, what's this all about? Well, I was just telling Sammy, George, that... I'll get it. Hello? This is Patience, Miss Susan. I just wanted to know if... Freddy! You... Freddy, darling! What? Why, what are you doing in town? Miss Susan, this is Patience. I just wanted to know if you told me pot roast for this evening or liver and onions. No. Why, you're working for an agency in New York, Freddy, and you're here to place some advertising? Why, it's incredible. I don't believe it myself. Uh... Miss Susan, I think there's something wrong with the connection. I say Pop Rose and you say Freddy, darling. But of course I can see you this evening. After all, isn't it business, Freddy? We're discussing business sometime, won't we? I'm, I'm discussing liver and onions. With the same old naughty Freddy. Shall we say tonight, then? Around eight? All right. Until then, Freddy. Bye. I gather that was Freddy. What a coincidence. First, you're Miss Kaufman, and now my dear old Freddie. Both here from New York to place big accounts with a star. Isn't that a coincidence? It didn't surprise me a bit. Susan, you never told me about this Freddie, darling. Oh, didn't I? Well, I guess I just never did think that you'd be interested, George. After all, that was years ago. What was years ago? Oh, nothing, really. Just one of those summertime things, stretching into fall and winter. You know. I do not know, Susan, and furthermore, I... <laughs> Sammy, haven't you got somewhere to go? Sure, but I was just thinking. I can hardly wait to become an adult. It certainly looks interesting. Miss Armstrong come in yet, Sammy? Patience phoned in an hour ago. Miss Armstrong will be late. Late, huh? Pretty darling again, I guess. What do you think, Mr. Harvey? Well, I think, Sammy, that for a responsible owner of a newspaper, Miss Armstrong is acting oh, like... Oh, good morning, George. How are you, Sammy? Well, I hope this doesn't cut too deeply into your social activities, Miss Armstrong, showing up at the paper once in a while. Why, George, you're jealous. How cute. Sammy, there's a delivery boy at the door. Would you get it? Sure, Miss Armstrong. I am not jealous, Susan, and furthermore, I reserve the right to criticize your conduct when, in my judgment, your actions are... Maybe, Miss Armstrong. Should I open oh, it? please, Sammy. You were saying, George? In my judgment, Susan, your conduct with this Freddy is... Just look! Oh, he shouldn't have. Is there a card, Sammy? Sure. To my darling Susan, in memory of a most... <laughs> The rest is personal. Now, look here, Susan. It's not enough that I have to put up with someone sending you single roses, but now this Freddy hits down and... Oh, I didn't think you noticed. I thought you were too busy with Miss Kaufman. Don't change the subject. I demand to know all about this Freddy. Uh, have you seen him, Sammy? Yes. No. Uh, well, let's get together, shall we? Well, Sammy means, George, that he's seen him, but only briefly. Sure. Well, uh, what's he look like? Is he tall or short? Or... Tall. Short. Uh, how is that? Well, he's a tall man who gives the impression of being short, you know. I don't know, but I'm beginning to suspect. 
And it's uh, strange I've never seen you two out together. Oh, Freddie hates crowds. I, I thought he was such a playboy. Well, he is, but in a quiet way. Sure. Susan, uh, Miss Kaufman and I are going to the Ming Room this evening. Uh, why don't you and Freddie, darling, join us? Oh, will you see George? Or we, uh, we could come over to your house. Oh, no. I mean... Good, then we'll make it the Ming Room, huh? I'm certainly looking forward to meeting Freddie. <laughs> so long. <laughs> Well, what do I do now, Sammy? The same thing exactly happened in a movie I saw, Miss Armstrong. The girl was in the same predicament. And how did she get out of it? I never found out. <laughs> the film broke. Sammy, what would I ever do without you? <laughs> It's a very interesting situation, Miss Susan. How do you intend to get out of it? I don't know. How about pressing Amaryllis into service? My unseen lover, Mm -hmm. the man with the flowers. How could I ever find him? (laughs) You might follow the nearest bumblebee. No use, patience. If I could just think of somebody to impersonate Freddy, I'd take anyone, the milkman, the paper boy, anybody. (laughs) Who's that? Well, I don't know, Miss Susan. You want me to answer the door? No, I'll go myself. Who knows? It might be Freddie Darling. Oh, sure, Freddie Darling. Oh, I, I didn't think you were in, Miss Armstrong. Uh, who are you? Can't you guess? <laughs> Here. A single forget me not. You're not. Yeah, Amaryllis. <laughs> oh no. I. Uh, I hope you don't mind me sending you flowers. You see, you, I'm a window washer. A window washer? Yeah, I wash the building across the street from your paper. I Every time I look over at you, I... Wait, I, I better be going. No, uh, no. Uh, come in, Amarella. Me? Well, thanks. I, I, I hope you didn't mind my throwing a rock through your window the other day with a rose. I hate windows. Oh, no, think nothing of it. Uh, uh, Amaryllis, do you possibly think, just for one evening, that you could impersonate a man named Freddy? That's my name, Fred. Oh, well, at least that's a start. You see, Fred, while this all seems horribly complicated, it's just something I've gotten into more or less by accident, but it's really fairly simple. And I... We're almost there. Are you sure you've got everything straight? Sure, Miss Armstrong. My name's Fred. So we're all right so far. And I'm from Philadelphia. New York. Oh, yeah, yeah, New York. You have been to New York. No, but I know all about it. I ain't got a guidebook. Good. I know it by heart. Fine. I had it for 20 years. Oh. If I ever get out of this, I swear I'll never again... Well, here we are. Shall we go in? After you, Miss Armstrong. George and Miss Kaufman, how terribly nice. Miss Kaufman, George, this is Freddie. Hi, you folks. This is Freddie. Freddie, do little, and we can't stay a moment. We just stopped by to say hello. Oh, no, 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 I wouldn't hear it. Now sit down. Join us. You aren't in a hurry, are you, Freddie? Me? No, I got all right. Well. Good. There we are. Come on, sit down. There. Yeah, isn't this cozy? I understand from George that you and I are in the same business, Mr. Doolittle. We are? Mm-hmm. Gee, don't your arms get tired? Oh, look, a noisemaker. What fun. <laughs> uh, you and Miss Coffin will have a lot to talk about, Freddie, being fellow New Yorkers. New Yorkers? You remember Freddie, New York. Oh, the tallest building in metropolitan New York is a Woolworth building. <laughs> The mayor of New York is James Jimmy Walker, who is widely known as a playboy in an after And in the immortal words of President Hoover, New York is the most... Uh, shall we dance, Freddy? Well, sure, Miss Armstrong, but I'm only on page three. Well, I guess we might as well go back to the table and face it, Fred. Am I doing all right, Miss Armstrong? Oh, fine. Wonderful. 
Why, George, where's Miss Carlton? Well, she got an urgent telegram, Susan, to close the deal here and come back to New York tonight. Big shake-up in her agency. She went to pack. Well, imagine that. You just never know, do you? No. No, you don't. Uh, strange her getting a wire right at this particular time. Yes, isn't it? I got a lot more information on New York. You know, Susan, I have a sneaking Is this suspicion Mr. that this table. Uh, yes, a wire for her, sir. Oh, another one. Uh, well, thanks. Uh, as I was saying, uh, Susan. Let me see that, George. What is? Oh, it's just, just a telegram. That's let all. me see it. Thank you. Oh, Susan, you shouldn't open that. It's imperative you close deal and return New York tonight to accept new assignment in Peru. <clears throat> George. Well, it's uh, quite a coincidence, uh, two wires and all. <laughs> George Harvey, you sent this wire. New York has a population of... Me? I sent the wire, Susan? You. Admit it. Well, I'll admit sending this one if you'll admit sending the first one. Oh, then you really wanted her to go back to New York, George? You never really doubted it, did you? Oh, George, aren't we foolish? <laughs> foolish, but it's fun. Don't anyone want to hear about Grant's tomb? <laughs> Our two stars, Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray, will be back with us in just a moment. George, this time at least, let's try to be adult about the whole thing. That's really the only way to grow. Grow? Uh, who wants to grow? In maturity. Now, I'm willing to admit that I was wrong in pretending the existence of Freddie, darling. Good. Of course, I wouldn't have done it if you hadn't pretended to be so fond of C.L. Kaufman. Now, I'm in the wrong. Of course, you wouldn't have done that either if, if I hadn't been so occupied with Amarillo. Well, at least that's settled. You were in the wrong. I was in the wrong. Then let's forget it, huh? That's very good of you, George. Very adult. Don't mention it. But did you ever stop to think that I wouldn't have been interested in Amaryllis if you ever bothered to send me a single rose once in a while? But I... Or an orchid? But I... Or a teddy bear? But... Oh, well. For one fleeting second, I was in the right. <laughs> Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray will be back next week in another exciting comedy adventure in the gay new series, Bright Star. This is Wendell Niles inviting you to join us then.